So you just ran git merge or git pull and you got one of those dreaded merge conflicts. No! No! In this video I'll show you what I wish someone had explained to me when I started out using git. So first of all, if you don't have time right now to deal with the conflict and you just want to abort the merge, just run git merge abort, which will just reset everything to the same state it was before. Once you have more time and are ready to handle the conflict, you can just pull or merge again. In my example here, I'm trying to merge the main branch into the develop branch. To fix the merge conflict, let's first run git status. You'll see that you're currently in a merge and you'll see which files git wasn't able to merge automatically. In my example here, git was able to auto merge the package.json file, but not the other two files here. They're conflicted, so we have to merge them manually. I've already opened the JavaScript file here in my text editor. I use Visual Studio Code here, but it really doesn't matter which editor you use. When git can't auto merge, a file, it will put these angle brackets and these equal signs into the file. These are called conflict markers. When I was still new to Git, these conflict markers confused me quite a bit. I didn't really understand what they meant and I just tried to use the default buttons in my editor to fix things. I think it's good to know that these conflict markers are not part of the editor. Git will actually edit the file on disk and put these angle brackets and equal signs into the file. It's just that some editors display the file in a different way making it easier to spot the conflict. But these symbols are actually part of the file. All right, so to fix it, go through the file until you find the first conflict marker. If your IDE doesn't show this as clearly, you can just hit Control F and search for multiple equal signs in the file. Let's take a closer look at these conflict markers. This part here, contains the changes that I made on my current branch. The word head just means the name of the branch or commit that I have currently checked out. And this part here contains the changes that were made in the other branch, the one that I'm trying to merge, in this case, the main branch. So what I could do now is just pick one of the two versions. In VS Code, for example, I could just press accept current change and it would simply edit the file to remove the conflict markers and give me the changes from the current branch. Of course, I could also have done this manually. Let me undo this real quick and show you. Okay, let's undo all this again and see what the other buttons do. Of course, I can do the same thing with the incoming changes. So if I hit this button, these two lines will remain. Let's undo this once again and try the last button, which lets us keep both versions. The thing is though, if you take a close look at the code here, you might notice that none of these three options are actually correct. The editor actually can't really help us with the merge here. We have to do it manually because here in the main branch, this variable was renamed, whereas here in the current branch, the log message was modified. So we actually need code from both versions to correctly do the merge. So here in this example, I'll copy over the part of the log message that has changed in my current branch and I'll keep the renamed variable from the main branch and then manually delete the conflict markers. Of course, this is just a simple example. And in real code bases, you often have much bigger changes. In such cases, don't be afraid to ask for help from the person who wrote the code that you're merging, especially if you're unfamiliar with what they wrote. I often see more junior developers struggle for hours with merges that could be resolved in a quick pair programming session. All right. Let's fix the other conflict and then move on to the next conflicted file. In this file, we can see again that reading these conflict markers can be quite confusing. For example, the head tag opens here and is closed in both of the conflicting versions. This is probably because the page title here was modified in both versions. So let's manually merge them and get rid of the extra code. All right, now here we can see that the body tag is opening in both versions. And as you can see, this heading was changed in both versions. Again, we'll have to manually merge this and then remove the conflict markers. Okay, now we fixed all conflicted files, but if we run git status again, nothing has changed. Git doesn't know yet that we have fixed the conflict. We still have to tell git that the state these files are in now is the desired state. To do this, we just run git add for all conflicted files. This basically tells git, hey, this file is now how it should be. It has been fully merged. Once we've added all the merged files, we can run git status again. As you can see, we're still in an unmerged state. We still have to tell git that we're done with the merge, which we can do by calling git commit. Before you commit though, it really helps if you run any automated tests in your code base. This way you can make sure that the manual merge didn't break anything. After committing, you can run git status again to make sure that git is no longer in a merging state. 
Let me know in the comments what problems you've run into with Git and maybe I'll make a video on it. Also, you might want to check out this video explaining why you should never use Git pull in the first place. This has been Fellow Maddox. Thanks for watching.